This episode of Tech Tuesday is brought to you by DVD. This is DVD. And this Whoa! is what happens when you watch DVD. It's a movie on a disc the size of a CD. The picture is twice as sharp as VHS. The sound is infinitely clearer. It looks and sounds like you're at the movies, but you can experience it at home. Not to mention, you can watch it in widescreen, pick your language, choose from features like director's notes, behind the scenes footage, trailers, and more. Watch a movie right on your computer. And rent or buy DVDs from these great Hollywood studios. DVD. See how good a movie at home can be. With over 5,000 titles to choose from, make sure you see your next movie on DVD. Yeah. Wow. Well, uh, I hope whatever we got paid for that is adjusted for inflation. Mm -hmm. Those dot-com dollars. So that's an ad from the year 2000 for the hot new DVD format. And, uh, you know, it sure features a lot of explosions which are certainly fun to see and hear in a high-res new video format, but they're a lot less fun when they're actually happening to you or your handheld mobile device mm -hmm. that sits inches away from your reproductive organs for most of the day. Let's talk about phones. So for the past week, Apple has been dealing with backlash over them having the courage to get rid of the headphone jack, forcing iPhone users to walk around with a pocket full of dongles, uh, such as this $40 Belkin dongle that you'll need if you have the audacity to want to actually charge your phone while listening to music. Uh, a dongle which you'll have to actually connect to a second dongle if your headphone uses a standard jack and not Apple's proprietary lightning connector. But hey, at least their phones aren't ticking time bombs, leaving a path of destruction in their wake, which is something that their biggest competitor on the hardware side of things, Samsung, can't, they can't say that right now. Nope. No. They can't really say anything. So as we told you last week, Samsung has issued a recall for the recently released Galaxy Note 7 because the damn things just keep spontaneously exploding. Whoops. And since then, even more horrifying reports of exploding phones have surfaced, and it's starting to become pretty clear that Samsung should have probably been doing a lot more to address this issue, and a lot sooner. Back on September 2nd, Samsung responded to the fact that there had already been at least 35 cases of phones exploding during charging by stopping sales of the Note 7 and offering to replace any phones that they'd already sold. But was that enough? Probably not, as Consumer Reports uh, pointed out at the time. Acknowledging a known issue and offering to replace people's phones is all well and good, but even though many news outlets were calling this a recall, it absolutely was not. Samsung would need to work directly with the Consumer Product Safety Commission, the US government agency in charge of dealing with these kinds of things, to then issue an official product recall and work with similar agencies around the world to do the same. Uh, this was just politely asking people to trade in their phones if they felt like it. Or if not, whatever, I don't know. Bull, bull, enjoy your phone. Uh, it didn't help that Consumer Reports said that the Note 7 was still on sale at several stores that they visited after Samsung acknowledged the issue. I'm wearing my ass shirt, sorry. <laughs> No, I take that off. There we go. So without an official recall, Samsung was depending on Note 7 owners becoming aware of the problem and its severity on their own via, I don't know, the newspaper <laughs> or the nightly news or whatever. Yeah, word of mouth. Yeah, but clearly not every Note 7 owner got the memo. So in the past week, there's been more exploding phones. A South Carolina man left his Note 7 charging at home while he drove to pick up his kids from school, and they returned to find their house on fire, with oh, the cool. damage so extensive that they can no longer live there. Mm -hmm. uh, over in Florida, a Florida man left his Note <laughs> 7 charging in the center console of his Jeep while unloading some purchases, and uh, he came back out of the house to find that the phone had exploded and engulfed his prized vehicle in flames. Another Note 7 horror story came out around the same time over in Australia, where a businessman staying in a hotel plugged his Note 7 into the official charging cable and wall charger, went to bed, and awoke to popping and hissing sounds early the next morning, with his exploding Note 7 causing 1,800 dollars dues in damage to his hotel room. The stories like these have helped push the Note 7 nightmare further into the public consciousness, but still, no official consumer protection recall. However, the uh, airline industry wisely decided to be proactive about the whole thing, with several airlines actively telling passengers to keep Note 7s turned off on flights and not plugged into chargers. The Federal Aviation Administration quickly jumped on board, issuing a statement of their own, strongly advising passengers not to turn on or charge these devices on board aircraft and to stow them in checked baggage. Mm -hmm. Samsung, can we get a goddamn official government recall on this fucking thing already? 
Oh, okay, it looks like they heard us that time because uh, this past Friday, both Samsung and the Consumer Product Safety Commission announced that they were finally working together to deal with this mess. Although, as of us filming this episode, they still haven't issued a formal recall because the CPSC is trying to figure out whether Samsung's plan to replace all Galaxy Note 7s with new Galaxy Note 7s is an acceptable remedy or not. Maybe. <laughs> and we may, we may have fixed it, who knows? I do like that uh, anyone with a Note 7 now has a, uh, like, plausible deniability to self-inflicted arson for insurance purposes. Yeah. Oh, I didn't oh my, my Jeep went up in flames. I had one of those yeah. Note 7s. The banana stand, it just went up. <laughs> yeah. There's always money in the banana yeah. stand, though. No, I meant, seriously, there is There's money, money in, the, in banana the banana stand. stand. <laughs> Meanwhile, anyways, with this whole thing, God only knows how many people are still unknowingly walking around with live grenades in their pockets, and at this point, it would be pretty difficult news to miss unless you were, like, a fucking child or something. Oh, God! Oh no! The most recent Note 7 incident occurred over the weekend in Brooklyn when a Note 7 exploded in the hands of a fucking six-year-old boy, giving him serious burns and reportedly traumatizing him enough that just being around cell phones now terrifies him, as it should. He mm -hmm. has PTSD now. Now, plenty of armchair geniuses on the internet have been quick to cast blame on the kid's parents, just like they did with Harambe, for not knowing about the problem, but... You know, that's missing the whole point about Samsung, a trusted global brand, selling an exploding phone in the first place, and they should have had proper safety things in place at that zoo in Cincinnati. That goddamn zoo! Yeah. Uh, and also, whoops, turns out that that phone that exploded in the kids' hands was not a Galaxy Note 7 mm -hmm. after all. Uh, it was actually a Galaxy Core Prime, one of Samsung's budget <laughs> phones. Great. So it's not clear how the original story got the information mixed up. Uh, but I don't know if this is better or worse for Samsung. Yeah, they have more exploding phones this now. Was, it was not another case of a Note 7 exploding, but it was an example of a completely unrelated Samsung device exploding in a child's hands, which is pretty bad. But still so, makes those armchair people look very dumb for calling it a mm -hmm. Note 7. But anyways, just don't give your kid a phone. Yeah, get, like Samsung is in a real bad place right now. Put a now. book in your kid's hands. Yeah, books don't explode mm -hmm. unless it's four, Fahrenheit 451. Yeah, books also don't put food on my table but book learning does. Mm -hmm. Anyways, there's a, of course, in any situation like this, there's always people who, even when informed about the problem, see these device explosions as a statistical anomaly. I'll take my chances. <laughs> Uh, it, technically, it really, really is. In the grand scheme of things, around 2.5 million Note 7s have been sold since its release, so the 100 or so worldwide examples of catastrophic overheating only accounts for a fraction of a percent. But at this point, Samsung isn't even going to let the holdouts live on the wild side, with rumored plans to limit battery capacity to 60% with its next software update, and possibly even simply kill the devices with another update. Sorry, mm -hmm. your phone only has half the battery capacity now because it's too dangerous. Yeah, I mean, that that actually, like, inconveniencing people is... Even worse. It's, it's, it's actually much more effective than saying, hey, it might blow up. If you can only charge your phone to, like, 60%, you're like, ah, oh, fine! Fine! Fine, I'll turn it back in. Yeah. Every Samsung Note 7 owner is now like the guy who sits on his porch as the wildfire takes over mm -hmm. his neighborhood. I'm not, I've been here for 50 yeah. years, and I will shoot this fire if it comes to my door. I don't care what big government says, asbestos is a great insulation of, uh, uh, what, is, what is asbestos? It's anyway, insulation. It's great, it works great. Yeah, it's, it, it's a flame retardant, but yeah, I'll take it my also chances. gives you cancer. <laughs> I'll take my chances. Anyway, so Samsung's stock, has uh, unsurprisingly seen one hell of a dip. Even the, more than Pokemon Go? Mm-hmm. Mm. The company's overall value went down by around 11% from closing time Friday to opening time Monday. It's the biggest day-to-day -day stock dip in the company's history. It's bounced back a bit since then, but Samsung's current value is between 10 and $20 billion less than it was before this all started, and this whole debacle will probably haunt Samsung for at least the near future, especially in terms of public perception. Mm -hmm. It's like those damn Priuses that got the gas pedal stuck. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Unless, of course, you're just, you know, one of those guys that likes to live on the edge. You ride around on your explosive hoverboard, puffing away at a, your custom-built exploding vape pen while you charge your new exploding Note 7 with an exploding portable battery you bought on Alibaba with a gas station USB cable from China. I like to live on the edge. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Only God can take <laughs> Anyway, speaking of dangerous new technology, if you're one of those people that just wants to watch the world burn, and you also have $50 burning a hole in your wallet, the USB killer is for you. So what does this USB killer do? Well, despite looking like an innocuous USB thumb drive, the USB killer will totally and permanently render useless just about any computer, TV, printer, router, charger, or whatever that you plug it into by instantly sucking the electricity out of the port and then shooting it right back in. That's pretty damn evil, but the makers of this device have created the USB killer essentially just to prove a point. Mm -hmm. 
So it was designed by a cybersecurity group uh, over in Hong Kong who for years have been frustrated that nearly every device in existence that features a USB port is vulnerable to a power surge that can completely fry the device. Mm -hmm. A year ago, they publicly raised the concerns and outlined exactly how a theoretical USB killer would work. But since then, they say the only company that they're aware of who has done anything about it is Apple, whose computers now feature USB ports that are protected from a power surge attack. So, so now, good guy Apple. yeah, good guy Apple. They also planted this Samsung story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we need people to stop talking about the headphone jack. Yeah. Kill Harambe. A uh, fun fact, uh, a good portion of the exploding uh, Samsung phones were actually Hillary Clinton's phones that her interns were yeah, tasked yeah, yeah. with smashing with a hammer. You they were like, don't smash lithium batteries, they'll blow up. We have to get rid of Hillary's Note 7. Let's put the kill switch on all of the Note 7s yeah. out there. Make them all blow up, just, just in case. Anyways, back to the USB killer. A, a year later now, rightfully frustrated that they exposed a huge vulnerability and hardly anyone actually did anything about it, they've released a consumer version of the USB killer that anyone can buy so that hardware manufacturers feel a little more pressure to fix their shit. And within just a day of putting the USB killer up for sale, they ran out of stock. Uh, so the new inventory is gonna be coming soon, as soon as tomorrow, mm -hmm. but it's not clear how many of these things actually sold. But if I were a hardware manufacturer, I'd be sweating just a little bit. And if I ran a business like an internet cafe or a copy shop or pretty much anything with publicly accessible USB ports, I'd be shitting my pants right now. The local UPS is gonna have a real problem. Get and that fucking thing and put it away, sir! Put it down! The local print shop is like, the only business we have left is people printing out yeah. tickets to events. Please don't take it away from us. <laughs> we can't afford to upgrade. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, this is all, of course, if uh, unless Samsung and Dell and Asus and all the big boys just bought up all the inventory themselves to keep it off the market. Yeah. Could be true. Like I don't think ransom. Samsung has the money to do it right now, mm, but yeah. anything's possible. Ugh. Yeah. But uh, speaking of lighting a fire under someone's ass and shaming them into being better, let's get our associate Phil Larigo in here to shame America's shitty internet service providers yet again. Whoa. Now, all right, pump, pump, pump your brakes. I'm still recovering from partying on Labor Day last weekend, so you guys have a new white knight who's fighting for your rights. Netflix, the streaming service that has thousands of titles but none you actually want to watch, has some strong words for ISPs. Fuck you and your data caps. All right, so they didn't actually say that, but they're pushing back hard against data caps that they say aren't effective. Internet providers have long hid behind the argument that data caps are there to keep greedy customers from torrenting billions of terabytes, which will crash their network and prevent honest grandmas from just checking their hotmail. Netflix says that data caps are an ineffective tool of network management and do not serve a legitimate purpose. Mm, yeah, they do. They are here to give service providers extra, extra profits for when you go over the data caps. And these providers are trying to put these data caps in place while we're still watching 1080p HD video. Netflix argued that 300 gigs per month is required just to meet the internet television needs of the average American. Mm. Last I checked, there's nothing in the Constitution about your aunt having the right to watch Dance Moms without getting charged extra. So Comcast recently raised their own data caps from 300 gigs to a terabyte. Oh, that's nice. But if you do the math behind streaming 4K video in the future, it's probably gonna cost some overages if you watch as much 4K Netflix as you do in regular old HD Netflix now. So with all the supposed cord cutting and streaming and people avoiding traditional TV services that are like super fucking expensive with their contracts, if customers watch as much TV through the internet as they do through regular old TV, they're gonna end up paying a lot more to stream it than when they subscribe to old fashioned grandma TV with packages or through cable. But here's honestly where I gotta play devil's advocate. So what? That's how capitalism works. Netflix's business model is cool because their customers get to watch as much as they want for a set price. We use the term binge watching to describe this behavior. It's like, name one other activity where binge is in the front and that's good for you. Binging <laughs> on vegetables, binging at the gym, nobody fucking talks like that. You binge on heroin and other shit that's bad for you. So ISPs whose job it is to make money and provide you with the bare minimum of internet, they realize that data is king now and will be God in the future. So they wanna place limits on it just like mobile providers have for years. And I hate these companies with a burning passion. You see me bitching about this every fucking week. But you know what? They're right. They're right to find the one thing that you and I care about and make that the thing that's expensive. That's why gasoline and street drugs and prescription drugs are also goddamn expensive. And sex, don't forget sex. If you're doing it wrong, sex. Binge <laughs> sex. Binge sex in. Yeah. That's a new Bruce Springsteen album coming out in 27. Now blow him out of here. All right, anyways, before your data caps kick in, let's get through a few more quick tech news squirts from the past week, starting with some pretty damn spectacular new photos from the Curiosity rover over on Mars. 
All right, maybe spectacular isn't the right word. Uh, my sinuses are getting itchy just looking at these things. Maybe we should stop calling it the red planet and start calling it sepia planet. Yeah. The sepia planet. Yeah. It looks like shit. We need to send someone up there dressed as a cowboy. Get mm -hmm. some great photos. <laughs> yeah, old timey photos. Yeah. Still though, it's absolutely fucking nuts that we can look at crystal clear high resolution photos of the rock formations on a planet 50 million kilometers away. Uh, it's also nuts too how similar the region of Mars, uh, this one's called the Murray Butts, or Buttes. Buttes. Is, uh, and it's kilometers. Yeah, whatever. Fucking nuclear, Can making just... fun of me for nuclear? <laughs> yeah, I think kilometers, kilometers, uh, whatever. Anyway, these uh, these Murray Buttes, they look exactly like the Vasquez rocks here in California that Star Trek and numerous other sci-fi productions have used for decades as an alien landscape. Mm -hmm. but I think they, uh, Gene Roddenberry was right. Yeah, he got it right. Mm -hmm. He had a real strong telescope. Mm -hmm. So let's move on to robot news. Our fears about a Terminator style future have always just gone away when we actually see footage of robots failing at basic human tasks or just getting the shit beat out of them. Mm -hmm. Most bipedal robots can barely stand or walk without falling over like a drunk baby. So it's a stretch to think that these things are gonna rise up and enslave us anytime soon. And not much of a stretch anymore though, thanks to those mad scientists down at Boston Dynamics who are gonna be written in the history books for probably Ruining the world. Hey. Uh, their Atlas robot can apparently balance its entire body on one foot on a piece of plywood less than an inch thick, like a goddamn tightrope walker. So shit just got real, yeah. and we're about to see robot on wire. So the last thing you see before you die is a robot standing on <laughs> yeah. it. It's gonna be, I'm gonna be really excited to see the robot Cirque du Soleil over in Vegas. That's actually a good idea, because they, you know, those guys, they're putting their lives at risk. Send a robot. I guess it would be more bo boring. You're not watching Death Defiance anymore. I would go to the robot circus. You went to that uh, robot no, circus. No, I went to the cat circus. Oh, there's a robot one in uh, uh, Tokyo, right? Oh, I mean, <laughs> not really. Well, there's people dressed up like robots, but imagine <laughs> once they get real robots in there. They weren't doing stunts either. They were just <laughs> driving around in a room with motors on in yeah. an enclosed space and probably killing but everyone. think of what they can do in five or ten years. Sure, whatever. It's fine. Anyway, speaking of shit getting real, very odd feud developed last week between Facebook and the nation of Norway over a photo of a Vietnamese child. Mm -hmm. A naked Vietnamese child, but not just any naked Vietnamese child. We're talking about Phan Thi Kim Phuc, who was photographed in 1972 at nine years old, running from a South Vietnamese napalm attack that had been mistakenly dropped on civilians and South Vietnamese soldiers and had given her extensive burning all over her body. Mm -hmm. The photo, taken by AP photographer Nick Oot and titled The Terror of War, won a Pulitzer Prize and remains to this day one of the most well-known and haunting images of how shitty war can be. But to Facebook, it's just a picture of a naked child and therefore has no place on their family-friendly social network. When Norway's largest newspaper, Aftenposten, uh, found out about the picture was and how it was being censored on Facebook, they reported on the ban, including the photo in their story, and then that news story was also banned from being posted on Facebook. Now, Aftenposten then doubled down by devoting the cover of their September 9th issue to calling out Mark Zuckerberg over the whole thing. And the Prime Minister of Norway got in on it by trying to post a photo to her Facebook page with the accompanying text accusing Facebook of stifling freedom of speech and had her post deleted as well. So Facebook has since backpedaled, probably realizing that pissing off an entire Scandinavian country, not good for business. It's like that damn duck on fire all over again. Yeah. Or the goose. Well, that, the goose is even more ridiculous. Mm -hmm. How could you be offended by a goose? Anyway, Facebook COO Cheryl Sandberg has apologized for how they dealt with the difficult decision of what to do about the Pulitzer Prize winning photo. And uh, she also wrote a letter to Norway's prime minister where she admitted, we don't always get it right. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they certainly do not. No. Uh, but you know who is getting it right? Twitter. Starting next Monday, media attachments like GIFs, images, videos, and polls will no longer count against the 140 character limit, nor will people's handles when you reply to them. So now you'll have way more room to explain your shitty, unoriginal memes with uh, some accompanying text. I always get upset when people are like, I'll put like weir and it'll be W-E-R-E and they're like, oh. oh, you didn't put an apostrophe there. And I'm like, yeah. I didn't have the space. Yeah, yeah, I, you have to get real creative. Like, all right, I'm like four characters over. Where can I remove apostrophes? You gotta change though into T-H-O. Yeah. Gotta, I don't wanna I, do it. Whenever I have to shorten U to just the letter U, I'm like, ugh, what is the most inoffensive part of this tweet where I can put just the letter U? Yeah, it's it's a, it's a like brevity versus sounding like a moron. Mm-hmm. Anyways. It's hard. Uh, that's it for Tech Tuesday. Be sure to check out some of our other videos over here. Yesterday, we reported on the upcoming greatest TV show ever, featuring Martha Stewart and Snoop Dogg, and they're uh, gonna be doing celebrity dinner parties and potentially getting Martha Stewart high on camera. 
Uh, then on News Dump, we talked about DC's plans to go ahead and lighten up the mood just a little bit, which we're not sure is the right thing to do, but yeah. any change is probably good change at this point. <laughs> and then on our most recent podcast, we have Steven Suptic. Uh, I said it right that time, I think. Yeah. Uh, he joined us to read some incredibly graphic erotic fan fiction, and uh, then we did a little fan fiction of our own to mm -hmm. Rick and Morty. So, yeah, there we go. Anyways, guys, uh, now another word from our sponsor. Oh, no! The question is, have you seen it? Have you heard it? Have you felt it? Whoa! DVD. It's a movie on a disc the size of a CD. The picture is twice as sharp as VHS. The sound is so incredibly clear, you can hear a pin drop. It looks and sounds like you're at the movies, but you can experience it at home. And let's not forget, you can watch it in widescreen, hear it in different languages, choose from features like director's notes, behind the scenes footage, trailers, and more. Even watch a movie right on your computer. Whoa! And rent or buy thousands of DVD titles available from these great Hollywood studios. And you can pick up a DVD player for under $200. DVD. See it. Hear it. Feel it. DVD.